start of Log 3. My name is Carson Isaiah Shen, and I'm the head of the Mech Propulsion Systems Lab, owned and operated by Aegis Mechatronics. This is my third log for keeping track of our work for the Peculiar Robot Contest, or PRC. The Fighting Directed Laser Armament Mech, or FIDLAR, still needs its primary laser cannon, so we will be tackling that now. The Alpha Voltaic battery modules are still delayed, but we've received confirmation that they are en route, so we'll do what we can and wire it all up later. We've previously mocked up a structure that could possibly work here, so we're going to follow that up with some actual supplies. Similar to the upper shell, this cannon will have thick armor plating which will take a bit of effort to cut and fit together. For transparency, we are repurposing some armor from a different project, so we'll be removing the manufacturing markings that are no longer relevant. Since defensive capability is one of our biggest goals, we are making a closable armored shell that protects the laser cannon and can be opened when firing. We generally try to avoid using one large hinge pin to avoid a single point of failure, but the armor should help to protect the assembly here. Hot welds were once again used, perhaps excessively, to ensure a strong connection with the lower claw armor. The laser cannon quote-unquote barrel or collimator itself may not look like much, but this is just the part where the energy is emitted. The technical bits and what makes it hit so hard is stored in the rest of the claw assembly. One perk of working on an electronic weapon is having excessive access to energy for components such as magnetic latches. These will make servicing the collimator lenses and housing much easier. Despite not having much room around the collimator assembly, we still put more armor panels where possible and made sure to adequately reinforce the support pillar that contains all of the fine wiring. Larger magnetic attachment points worked better for the collimator mount. Electromagnetic latches were also used to keep the armor shut when not in active use and will prevent forced entry into the claw. After adequate testing of fitment, the lower claw armor was welded shut and reinforced with a front plate that will prevent enemy fire from hitting the collimator subassembly, which is more fragile than a typical ballistic barrel. Tritium gas was selected as our gain medium and will be housed inside of a crystal lattice tube. Silicon spacers prevent the heated crystalline tube from contacting the housing, and additional vents were added to keep things cool after firing. The same piston design that we used on the legs will be strong enough for the claw's ability to open and close. We already have the materials and tools for it, so we'll stick with what works. Funny enough, even though the laser cannon is massive, there isn't a lot of space to fit in a hydraulic piston and brackets had to be added for proper rotation. The piston motion is successful but only if held centered, 
so spacers were added and welded in place. One more pair of magnetic latches was needed to keep the claw firmly in the open position. Having completed the major components, we can now proceed with the integration of minor system elements. A spare vehicle clutch was cannibalized for parts to assist the main hinge pin in rotation and braking. The hydraulic piston can perform most of the opening and closing, but the clutch is necessary for starting and stopping the motion smoothly. Installing the clutch allows us to see where we can add additional venting. Vents are important for ballistic weapons to cool down, but it's even more critical for energy weapons. A large armored mount, such as those found on the hips and shoulders, was added as an attachment point. Aegis Mechatronics prides itself on clever design, but sometimes you just get lucky. A perfectly fitting shroud was installed to protect the hydraulic piston, and enough clearance was left for easy disassembly. Small service latches were added to aid technicians with repairs. Actively pumped venting was installed to prevent heat from the laser cannon from creeping into the hydraulic pump housing. Similar to work on the upper shell, fixtures were installed ahead of time for later use with functional systems as they become available. One last piece of armor on the hydraulic pump housing should be enough bulk to keep the laser cannon well protected. Previously, we made placeholder mounts to help visualize where the main armaments would go. However, now that the laser cannon is assembled, new mounts are needed in a stronger orientation. Even though we made the legs as low as possible, the arm still needs to be lifted up to have clearance when opening and firing. The plan is to have a rigid arm connection, so even though the frame has angle lock capability, we need to remove it to achieve minor adjustments that put the cannon right where we want it. After finding just the right angles, the arm was cold welded into a solid brace. This also provides an opportunity to attach armor similar to what was used on the legs. A sodium acrylic composite filler was used to finalize the connecting arm. And per usual, an extra bit of armor plating was placed on the exposed side of the arm to maximize protection. Fasteners always help to keep parts aligned but they were supported with cold welds to make sure nothing would come apart. Some final welding and a large bolt and the arm is done. As previously mentioned, Heat dissipation is an important ability for energy weapons. We want to incorporate a large, actively vented system adequate for the size of this laser cannon, so a custom hinge system made from metal panels was integrated into the pre-existing magnetic attachment points.
This large vent flap covers all exposed holes on the upper rear of the cannon and easily lifts to allow heat out. One final magnetic latch allows the vent to remain firmly shut with the rest of the claw's internal mechanisms, but accelerates upwards when activated. With one more vented shroud to protect the electromagnetic attachment point, the laser cannon is done for now. Completing the arm mount means we can call this part done and test fit the new weaponry. For better or for worse, there has been no more signs of espionage during this phase of the build. Hopefully things stay quiet for the rest of the Fiddler project's development. Sabotage against any of the sensitive components in the laser cannon would be a shame this far into implementation, but I've been keeping a tight ship around here and work is progressing steadily. It seems the two-week development cycle is working for everyone in the team, and bi-weekly check-ins help to catch the unexpected. We'll be open to addressing questions or concerns on behalf of Aegis Mechatronics. Attached is some footage from our current progress. Feel free to leave your comments before the final audit is submitted later in the year. I need a nap. This is all for now. Thank you to our benefactors for continued support. This is the end of Log 3.